I describe myself as a mother musician that is Samoan and is a confident Kiwi woman, independent and a boss, <laughs> and a boss bitch, yeah. <laughs> I do find it hard being a woman because I do juggle a lot, a lot of roles, and I just took on managing the band probably about two years ago, and we had to just reassess everything. It almost got to a point where I was like, I'm gonna move out <laughs> in order to do my job because I can't actually take care of every possible thing domestically inside the home. From that conversation, we had to reassess how this was actually gonna work. And that really opened my eyes to see how many roles I do actually play and how impossible the task is, but also how probably a lot of women that are very much the same are mastering this role between the home and their job. A lot of it is about the mental load of, and how heavy that actually is in your daily lifestyle. And then once you actually realize, oh, that's what it is, that's the pain in my ass, <laughs> you know? And then it's like, oh, okay, so how can I stop doing that? And then you start having these really important conversations. It's actually just time for women to stop that because actually men are capable. They work in a completely different way. They won't do it exactly perfectly to the way that you would, but you have to let a little bit of that go if you don't want to be the one that's doing the dishes and managing the band, stop it. My mum is my major inspiration, to be honest. Um, she's a mother of six, and she ran a lot of youth movement businesses that included her kids. It's the only reason why I have the career I have, literally, because I was in these holiday programs, which is more like performance drama school, if we were rich, which we weren't. We were like lower socioeconomic. And then I would just watch her run these businesses. So she did sort of like a Pacific Island Women's Refuge in Christchurch, a Pacific Island Arts Youth Program, all to do with arts and music. Music. I watched her do the business side and now I run my own business doing music, so she's my number one. The music industry is like a 90% male industry across the board, no matter where you are, what you're doing. It's just even been as simple as being like the only woman in the room and being treated like you're the only woman in the room. Like, would that have been said like that or would that have happened like that had I been a man? There's definitely always this kind of presumption that, oh, you don't really know what you're talking about. Let me tell you what you're talking about. Oh, you think this. How funny. You actually think, I've just been twiddling my thumbs the last 16 years in this industry. I actually know what I'm talking about. You're just not actually listening to what I'm saying. You want me to say what you're thinking. Those kinds of conversations. And actually, you know, we've had a breakthrough this, these past couple of years. It's been wonderful. And it's due to internationally, everyone kind of talking about it. And I remember sitting in this panel talk at the museum, and it was with a whole bunch of other women talking about women's role in the music industry. And the question was, what can we do to change it? And I remember being really like, at the time being like, I don't know, and don't ask me, like, you know, you've studied women something, you do it. You know, I'm just a muso, self-taught musician from like Christchurch nowhere. And then I just thought about it and I'm like, the more conversations we have about it, the more it is actually changing. But to me, it feels like that's all that's needed. As these conversations persist and continue and start to change laws and start to change minds and the pay gap completely disappears, I feel like eventually, I mean, I'm an optimist. I feel like eventually we're gonna get there, you know? <laughs>